So I just want to do a quick one. I just went to the beer store. It's uh, Friday afternoon. We have pretty much the afternoon off. So I thought, why not have some beers? Because I like beers. So I go in the store and here in Denver, we still have the face mask business going on. So I put my mask on, go in there you know, and say hi. And uh, it turns out it's ladies day at the beer store. So there's, in this case, two Asian, uh, you know, related ladies, you know, Asian Americans, I guess you could say. Uh, one of the uh, ladies looked like probably, probably Korean. The other lady may have been Filipino, uh, something like that. But I mean, they're just, they're young women, right? Young American women, uh, you know, 21, 22, probably college students. We got a college right up the road here, so. You know, maybe they go to the University of Colorado at Boulder. <gasps> God forbid they'll be brainwashed soon enough. But anyway, so I bring my purchase up to the to the thing. Dale's Pale Ale. Thank you. Thank you very much. Longmont, appreciate it. Thank you, Longmont. Even you northern folks are pretty cool. So I bring my, my beer up to the thing, and, and she's listening to country music. Turns out it was Garth Brooks, you know, playing uh, with uh, the dance or whatever. <laughs> Garth. Garth was huge when I was on the radio. He came in, 89 I think he started, and then 91 was his big year. Holy shit. I mean, oh my god, and he's a master marketer, by the way. What he would do is, he would intentionally book like a night right at a uh, you know in this town where I was at it was maybe seven eight thousand arena you know not not very big and of course the tickets would sell out like that <laughs> and of course you say oh I love my fans I'm gonna I'm gonna do a second show cuz I love you perfect marketing it was fantastic people were just Oh, even Laura was all over that Garth Brooks. Oh, he's, he's just a, such a nice guy. Well, I'm sure he is, but uh, he knew what he was doing. <laughs> Aside from the point. So these two young Asian American ladies are going to check me out. You know, I got my beer and, and whatever. And she's listening to Garth. Oh, you like country music? She goes, hey, man, country music is my jam. I said, really? Yeah, I love country music too. It's fun. Uh, did you hear about the Dixie Chicks? Changed their name. And she's like, Dixie Chicks? Why, why would they do that? Why would they change their name? It's like, well, uh, Dixie. Dixie would be, you know, slavery. You, you would expect her to just know that because obviously everybody in America is a racist. I said, you know, Dixie. The South, you know, Confederacy, and she's like, why would they change her name? They've had that name for like 20 years. I said, yes, they have. That's uh, quite interesting. I didn't want to mention that it's just a mm, clever marketing tool because they're coming out with a new album. <gasps> I know. Now look, I, the Dixie Chicks are fantastic. You know, I've got Dixie Chicks records. I listen to them all the time. They really, really do a nice job. They, they have some, some great music, great musicians, and uh, even Natalie, not the best singer, but she fits. You know what I mean? It's just one of those things, and those girls really work together well. So I, I enjoy them. So I'm not putting them down. I think it's a marketing stunt. And you know, whatever, you know, you're gonna sell, uh, <laughs> sell some more records because you're woke. So the Dixie Chicks, in case you haven't heard, uh, they've changed their name to the Chicks, which of course would be <laughs> sexist, wouldn't it? <laughs> the chick, you can't call me that. <laughs> You're an evil man. I'm not a chick. I'm a woman. Hear me roar. But again, as we've discussed a million times, uh, sexism, racism, etc. ism only works in one direction. See. Uh, that would be the direction from the evil white man to everyone else. Okay, so I found it interesting that uh, these two ladies had no idea that the Dixie Chickens changed their name to the Chickens, right? 
And so they're like, oh, well, uh, okay. As if, what does that have to do with slavery? <laughs> Good point, young lady. <laughs> uh, exactly nothing. I mean, what's next, really? Uh, Dixie Highway, every, every friggin' city in Florida and in the South has something called Dixie Highway or Dixie, you know, Thruway or Dixie whatever. I mean, Win Dixie, for Christ's sake, is the name of one of the grocery stores. <laughs> Win Dixie. I mean, come on, right? So I guess that's got to change pretty quick. So we can't have that because it reminds uh, young Asian ladies at the beer store of, you know, the Civil War, obviously. And so then I mentioned, did, did, do you like Lady Antebellum? And she's like, oh, yeah, I love it, Lady Antebellum. I love Lady Antebellum. I love their songs. I mean, it gets a little poppy in places, but generally it's good quality, pretty decent, you know, lyrics, and the mu the musicianship is is top shelf. I mean, they're they're good. They changed their name, as you probably have heard, to Lady A, because of course Antebellum would be before the war indicating slavery, of course. I mean, that's what everybody thinks, right? You hear Lady Antebellum, you think, oh man, I wish it was 1850, when we still had them slaves at Aunt Jemima making me pancakes in the morning. Of course, no one thinks that way, but some movements, call them MLB, believes all whiteies are like that, right? And so I said to these two young ladies, I said, Lady, Antebellum, and an, Antebellum, and they're like, uh, what? And I said, Antebellum, before the war, when we had slavery, and they're like, oh, <laughs> it's serious. They're like, yeah, I guess I never thought of it that way. Yeah, most people don't. That's the fucking point! Oh my god. Time for another beer. James Maxwell, thank you for listening.